Hello friends, today we are going to talk about payment gateway system design. Before starting, I would like to tell you that you can adjust the video speed to 1.25x or 1.5x as per your convenience. Because I have seen a lot of comments where uh, you guys have asked questions which I have already described in the video. So I will just advise you that don't just scroll through the PPTs. Uh, just listen to what I am explaining because I put less content on PPT and focus more on the explanation. So if you just scroll up, then you might miss some of the explanation. So just bear with me, uh, adjust the speed to 1.25x or 1.5x and uh, listen to the whole video. Now in today's video, we are going to talk about payment gateway and payment in itself is a very, very big domain. So before jumping into the requirement and into the system design for this particular system, I would like to go through some of the terms and uh, basically some of the protocols that are followed in the payment industry. So I will share the content. There is a timeline below. So if you already know about the domain, you can skip all these and move to the system design part. Otherwise, just bear with me and uh, you will gain some knowledge on the payment domain also. So I'm going to cover some of the terms that is used in payment industry. I'm going to tell you how card payment works. So I will show you the overview and the high level design of how card payment works. Then I will show you how a 3D secure card payment works and what is the difference between a normal payment and a 3D secure payment. And after that, I'm going to start the system design for payment gateway. So here we will gather the requirement which we are going to focus on. We'll have some design consideration that what all things can be included as part of this particular system design. Then we will have a high level architecture. We'll talk about the APIs and finally we will talk about the payment processor. So this is going to be the content for this particular video and there is a timeline given for each of these content. So you can move ahead and go back in the video using that timeline. So let's look at the terms to note. So the first term is the payment gateway itself. What is the payment gateway? So it is a service which allows us to make an online payment. So you can integrate it with an e-commerce website and it will support the seller to basically collect payment in various ways from the user. So user can pay buy item and pay using a credit card, a debit card, internet banking, e-wallet, gift card, all those things. So everything will be supported by the payment gateway. Next thing is a payment service provider. So what is the PSP? So PSP is the person or is the system or the service which makes sure that money is transferred from buyer's account to the merchant account. So this will be integrated as part of the payment gateway itself. Issuer bank. Issuer bank is the bank which is related to the buyer. So this is the bank which has issued the debit card or the credit card or the UPI to the user so that they can go and buy stuff online. Card association. Card association is an, another entity. So this is the association which basically provides the number for <coughs> your credit card and debit card. So these are organizations like Visa, MasterCard, American Express, all those stuff. Next is the PCI DSS, which is Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard. So what this standard means is that it is basically a compliance and why this compliance is used? This compliance is used if you want to store a secure data which is related to your card. So if you want to store the card number, the expiry date and the name of the person for whom the card has been issued. If you want to store that into your database, you need to be compliant with this standard. So all the payment gateways should be compliant with this PCI DSS uh, standard. Other than payment gateway, even e-commerce site like Amazon, Flipkart, they are compliant with this standard and that is why they are able to save your card on, on their website itself so that you don't have to enter the details every time when you make payment. Next is the acquiring bank. So acquiring bank is the bank which is associated to the seller side. So you can think of the acquiring bank as a EPOS machine. So when there was not an online payment or now also when you go to a shop and you want to buy some stuff using a card so you, they, you will basically give the card and the seller will use a POS machine so that POS machine is issued by some bank so similar to that the payment processor is also issued by some bank so that you can consider it as an EPOS 
so that is the acquiring bank so acquiring bank comes into picture on the seller side now 3d secure so this is a protocol which was initially defined by visa and now it is used by all the other card association and it is used for added security we will talk about it in detail in the section where we talk about how you make a 3d secure card payment and finally iso 8583 so this what is iso 8583 so this is a switch message format so when you make uh, when you come to payment industry and you want to make some payment so a normal JSON message or XML will not work. All the payment messages are done in a ISO standard way, standard format way. So this is nothing but a message format which is defined by I, uh, which is defined in the payment industry. And uh, you need to basically, whenever you make a card payment, you need to send the message to other party in this format itself. It will not support JSON. It will not support XML. So these are few terms that uh, will be used throughout this particular video. Next is we'll talk about how the card payment works. <clears throat> so for card payment, there will be a UI where your details will be captured. So this UI can be on the seller side or like Amazon or Flipkart, or it can be on the payment gateway side. So payment gateway also can expose a UI if the e-commerce website is not PCI DSS compliant. So in that particular case, in the payment gateways UI, you will enter all your card detail. Once the card detail is entered over SSL, this is sent to merchant's application. So this is the case where your merchant is integrated with payment gateway and merchant application will also have a unit or a service which will be used for payment processing. So they will, it will not do much. It will just capture those detail and in a secured way, it will transfer it to the payment gateway. Now over SSL, this is sent to payment gateway. What payment gateway now will do is like we talked about all these messages will be in XML, JSON or the format which merchant application understand or the payment gateway understand or uh, whatever merchant has decided to use the format for their application. But that does not work in the payment industry. So going forward from payment gateway side, it will convert that XML or JSON or whatever message format it is there into uh, ISO 8583 standard which we talked about before which will which is the one which is understood by the EFT switches. So this will be sent to a payment processor. Now payment processor is used by merchants acquiring bank. In most cases payment gateway and payment processor will be used together. There are some cases where payment processor is separate from payment gateway. But in this scenario we will say that there are two entities, one is payment gateway, one is payment processor. Now payment processor, what it will do is, this will receive the EFT switch message. So it has to, it understand that, okay, I need to make a payment using the card transaction. So what it will do is, it will send the message to the card association. So card association are the entity like Visa, MasterCard, MX. And they will, now what they will do is, they will receive this message. And they know that which particular card number is associated with which bank. So suppose you have a card number like 42634550, something like this. So card association has a directory and there they know that which set of number has been issued to which bank. So they know, suppose you get the number like 42365543. So they know that this has been given to HDFC bank. So what they will do is they will redirect the request to the issuer bank, which is the HDFC bank. So card association will make the call to the issuer bank or it will not make it will redirect the message that it has got to the correct issuer bank. Now issuer bank, it will make the transaction or it will verify the transaction, whether the card is valid or not, whether it belongs to the correct user, whether the CVV given is right, whether the PIN given is right, all those authorization will happen. And then it will check whether there is a balance in the account for the given payment or not. So if everything is successful, then issuer bank will authorize the payment and it will deduct the balance and it will send a message back to card association saying that, okay, I have received the payment and the transaction is good. And uh, then card association will go back to payment processor, go back to payment and finally the sale will be done. So this is the overall picture of how the payment happens. Now at any point if there is a failure, suppose it fails here or it fails here, then the same has to be handled by payment gateway 
using payment processor so we will talk about all those things also in the coming part of the video now we'll move on to how a 3d secure card payments work so what is the difference between a normal payment and a 3d secure card payment so for the 3d secure payment part till here everything is same till payment gateway everything is same now 3d means that there are three domains involved so what are these domains so the first domain that will come into picture is the acquiring domain which is on the payment processor side with the uh, basically with the acquiring bank so this is nothing but a small plugin which will be given by the acquiring bank and this domain comes with a small piece of software and that software uh, is used for encrypting the message and uh, decrypting the message also so all those will uh, we'll talk about how all those works in the coming uh, coming session so what you need to understand here is that once the payment gateway receive the uh, iso 8583 message what acquiring domain will do is it will now convert it into a secured message it will encrypt it or uh, whatever is the logic that has been written for that particular piece of software so it will do its job and finally it will send the message to the uh, card association so here the seller domain will send the card detail and to the interportability uh, interportability domain so what interportability domain is that on the card association side we have a interportability domain which is nothing but a set of directory so what it does is it will make a check there that whether actually a issuing bank is existing for the given transaction or not so it will have a directory from where it will check and if the card is fake or it is not valid uh, not valid in the sense that uh, maybe it has expired so in those situation it will not even go further it will basically come out from here only saying that the card is not valid and the transaction has failed so that is the use of interportability interportability domain now if the card is a valid one then in that particular case this interportability domain will send a response back to the acquiring domain saying that it is success and it will give you a url which will be for your access control server now access control server is the server which is on the issuing bank side issuing bank is the bank which has given you the card now if the card was valid then interportability domain will have the url <coughs> of the relevant ac uh, access control server so it will give that server detail and the url to the acquiring bank and now the payment processor can make the request to the issuer with this access control server link and it can send the send or receive the secure message now this secure message is whatever the encryption logic has been used by the acquiring domain and it will send the actual cv uh, actual request which is the card detail with cvv pin everything to the issuer bank and here in the access control server side again there is a piece of software which is running which can decode this message and it will do the authorization so once the authorization is done everything is checked here and if the payment is successful in that case or even if the payment is failure in that case it will be sent back to the processor with a code and that code will tell us what is the reason for failure or if it is a success then the transaction is success now from here the same request will follow it will go to payment gateway and it if the payment is success then the same will be displayed that order will be placed in merchants application otherwise uh, a failure message will be shown that the payment has failed and what is the reason for failure now in this whole scenario this whatever is given in the yellow bordered line or the box this is the actual payment gateway so this payment gateway that uh, is written here is that it's the ui ingestion part and I have just shown for explanation purpose that payment processor is a separate entity but it can be integrated as part of the payment gateway itself. Now if you are clear on this part we will jump into the requirement and quickly look into the system design for payment gateway. So first we have the functional requirement the first requirement is that it should allow multiple ways of payment what it means is that it should allow card payment it should allow UPI payment it should allow internet banking payment maybe gift cards and all those things then all the payment details should be secured your transaction should be secured it should avoid double payment in case of failure or retry it should not happen that the issuer is charged twice or the buyer is charged twice which will be a very bad thing 
the response should be fast so all this process that is taking place it should happen in like a matter of seconds and the payment gateway should handle the timeout and failure so it should have some mechanism of retry if the transaction is timed out or if it failed in between and on the non-functional side the system should be highly consistent it should be highly available and it should be highly scalable so we are okay to give away the partition tolerance so we cannot give away consistency it cannot be like the system is eventually consistent here we want a hard consistency system should always be available why it should be always available because if it is not available there will be failure in transaction in between and no one is going to use it and it should be scalable because uh, going going forward if it is a success then more people will come and use it now we'll look at some of the design consideration for this particular system so what all things we should consider first is the multiple subsystems to handle different kind of payment you should not burden one module of your application to handle all the payment you should have like small small service to handle a simple or a simple transaction or a simple payment type like one service to handle or one api to handle your card payment another api to handle internet banking and upi because all these three are not related so different types of payment will follow a different procedure and that is why it should all be decoupled next is secure your payment detail now since as part of your payment you are going to store the data or store the transaction in your database so that is why it's required that you secure the payment detail so if there are some pii which will be there like the card detail the account detail and the seller detail so all these details should be encrypted you can use any tool for that for for that purpose now whenever you are sending the transaction you should use ssl in this particular scenario you cannot send it in an in a plain text way now here consistency and availability should be chosen over partition tolerance and like i told that it's okay we don't want multiple copy of the transaction but the transaction should be consistent and it should be highly available and there should be some way in which if there is a failure we should be able to handle that and avoid the duplicate payment or the loss of money for the buyer or the seller so that is why we need to save the transaction now to achieve that we need to save that transaction and that is why point number two is also there that since we are saving these details we should encrypt the PII fields next is that the system should be scalable because we will handle like 10 million kind of transaction in a day so let's look at the high level architecture for this design so we have a seller's website from seller website we will get the detail or you uh, the seller either seller will send the card detail to us directly or it will send the request to payment gateway to expose the uh, ui to, to the buyer so that they can enter the card detail there it can be in two ways one of the two ways so once we have exposed the ui or the seller has sent the detail to us what we need is we need an ingestion system where we need to ingest the payment that is coming through so we'll get the payment uh, this what payment ingestion service will do is it will ingest the transaction it will save the transaction in our database now to save this transaction we need a transaction id generator what what this transaction id generator will do is it will create a unique id which will be associated to this particular payment now since it is associated to this particular payment anytime we have to retry or some failure happens or we need to debug so we can use this id to track this whole payment because in our scenario we will send the request to outside and from outside we will get the response outside means the if it is a card transaction we are making a call to the card association we are making a call to the uh, the control access control server also of the issuer bank so they everywhere this transaction id should be used for uh, tracking of this uh, transaction uh, in an atomic way so once we have the transaction id generator we will save the detail in our database so database how we will save the detail we will save the transaction id and the other payment detail now the other payment detail comprises of the type of payment that we are getting from seller's website whether it is a card payment or internet banking payment or upi payment so the second column can be first column is your transaction id second column can be your type of payment 
then you will have another column which will store the uh, the ID of that payment type. So if it is uh, a card payment, you need to store the card number. If it is internet banking, then you might need to store the internet banking user ID. If it is UPI payment, you need to store the UPI ID. So one column will be for that. Then another column you need to save the uh, your amount. What is the amount of this particular transaction? Then you need to store this transaction belongs to which merchant. Basically when clearing happens, which merchant bank or which merchant account should be credited with the payment. So that detail will be required. Now, when we consider all these scenario, we see that the data that we are getting is very structured. So uh, RDBMS will be a good choice for this database. We can also have uh, another database which will pull from pull the data from here and store for analytics purpose. We'll talk about it in, in later section. So once we have stored the data in our database, we'll put that message in a distributed queue because we want to decouple the ingestion system from the processing system. So we have the distributed queue, we put the message there and the pro then the processing system will pick up the message from the distributed queue and it will do its processing part. We'll talk about the processor or the design of the processor in the later section and we'll see how it will be talking to the queue and to the database. So finally, once the in a very good scenario, once the payment is done, it is successful or if it fails, payment processor will update the database for this transaction ID saying that, okay, the transaction has been successful or failed. Now, one more thing before going forward that how you will uh, make sure that the query on this database is very fast. Now you have chosen RDBMS for this. So you need a partition strategy or some way in which the uh, in which you can basically speed up the query because you will be getting so many queries every second. So one good way will be that you partition all your table based on date. So every day will have one partition. Now you can create a sub partition uh, for your RDBMS. That sub partition can be based on the type of the transaction. So there will be one sub partition for the day for UPI payment, one sub partition for the day for your card payment and so on and so forth. So those can be list partition, date can be a range partition. So uh, that, that will be a good strategy. So that when you query, you will be basically pruning the partition and picking up the data from the individual partition. So if you don't have the knowledge about partition pruning and all, don't worry, uh, we'll discuss it uh, in some other video when we talk about the database partitioning and all those strategy, you can just have a look uh, on the Google and you will understand partition pruning is basically when you uh, pick up the data from an individual partition rather than scanning all the partition of the table. So that will be a good thing for all the queries and you will get an efficient query mechanism here. So this is overall architecture of the payment ingestion. I have not talked about payment processor also because we will break down this payment processor system into smaller component going forward. Before going to that, we'll talk about some of the APIs which will be relevant to payment ingestion and payment processing. And sorry, before that, there is an analytic service also. So why we need an analytic uh, system here is that it can talk to the queue and it can also talk, pull some data from this database or a better way will be that there can be a service, a separate service, which will pull the data from this database, uh, not required in a real time, in a non real time system also. And what it will do is it can put it in some other database which can be RDBMS or it can be a NoSQL database also. Uh, a NoSQL columnar database can be a good choice if you want to perform, perform analytics like uh, uh, handling the failure scenario. So if you pull all the detail from this database where there was a failure for a particular type of card transaction or a internet banking transaction, so what you can do is the analytics system can compute uh, a stats that okay if the transaction was coming from visa card x percentage of transaction failed today if it was coming from a upi payment y percentage of transaction failed today now these analytics can be sold to the seller which is uh, amazon or flipkart where what they can do is they can showcase that's the same data to the user during payment time and they can say that okay whenever someone has made a payment in past one day or two day 
uh, with using this visa card the failure percentage was this much for upi it was this much for internet banking it was this much so that can basically help the user to or the buyer to take an informed decision that okay do i want to make a card transaction or shall i make an internet banking transaction so that is where the analytics will come into picture that is one part of the analytics so if you want to do that a columnar database can be very helpful because it will have uh, you can have similar kind of column families there for one family can be for internet banking one family can be for your uh, card payment and all those things so next look at the relevant apis that is present so for payment in json uh, the first api will be you get the form for card payment so if the seller website is pci dss compliant in that case they will send a request to payment gateway and they will say that i want the detail if the payment uh, if the seller you uh, sellers website is not pci dss compliant in that case they will send a request to payment gateway saying that i want a form for the card payment so card payment form this api can expose a ui to sellers website so there they can show a form which will have the data to be filled to capture the card detail card detail expiry date cvv name all those things once we got those details you need to post the request for the card payment so what this uh, api will do is it will start the ingestion for card payment it will store it in the database and finally it will put the request in the distributed queue also similar to this we will have for upi for internet banking and for uh, if someone wants to query a transaction based on transaction type so you get the transaction id and all those details using the transaction type this can be helpful in case of building of the history uh, of your transaction uh, there can be one more api to get the history of transaction for a particular user or a particular transaction type for seller also so those can be discussed with your interviewer or if you are building up your system then you can come up with all those requirement and add those apis as well now for payment processor uh, the first will be you process the upi payment so this can be a simple microservice similar to that you can have a process for card payment for internet banking payment then you can have a service or retry on failure what happens when there is a failure in any one of these transaction and uh, finally you get the iso message for your given xml or json message so all those things will be there as part of your payment gateway and these are the relevant apis now we'll talk about the payment processor in more detail so we'll break down the payment processor so we know that once we have put the message uh, from the ingestion service into distributed queue from here uh, it will be picked up by the payment processing service so what payment processing service will do is um, as you remember in the uh, diagram where i showed that how 3d secure payment work it will have a plugin and this particular plugin will send the request to uh, the plugin for acquiring domain it will send the request to the interpretability domain and from there it will get the url for the access control server so all those piece of code will go here so it will have all those uh, modules to do the payment and finally once the payment is done then it will update the status or it will update the status of the payment in the database and in case of failure what it will do is it will put the message in a it can be the same distributed queue or but the topic will be different basically so it can put it put the message in a failed queue so it can be the same queue that we are using if you are using kafka or any other distributed queue so you create a new topic for just dumping the failed messages so once the failure is done you update the message uh, you update the status in database saying that this payment has failed and put the message in the queue saying that this is the transaction which has failed now why this queue will be helpful is because there will be another service which will be your payment retry service which will be listening to this particular queue and it will what it will do is it will check for that transaction that what is the status if it has failed then it will try retry that particular payment and uh, since the transaction id is unique so when it makes a when it makes a request to the card association or issuer bank with the same transaction id it will get a status from them that this payment was already processed so if it was already processed and it failed in between in that particular system this payment retry service will update the database simply saying that the payment has been successful it will not duplicate the payment 
so that is the benefit of this retry and finally we will have a clearing service so once all the payment is done so till now whatever we were talking about was from the buyer's point of view now when the buyer's point of view is immediately the <coughs> money was deducted from buyer's bank and it was parked somewhere now from this somewhere's account or in some account it has to go to the account of seller otherwise there will be no point of seller doing the business right so this clearing service it will read the database and it will pick up all the successful transaction and in the database also it will be there will be a we can add one more column which will say that the transaction has been cleared or not cleared so it will pick up all the transaction for that day which is not cleared so this clearing will happen like once in a day at end of day or it can happen like twice in a day whatever is the relevant period that has been fixed so what this clearing process will do is it will pick up all the transaction that are not cleared yet and it will settle the account so if suppose seller one there were 10 users who bought the product from seller one so whatever is the amount that the seller one has to send or whatever is the amount that seller one will get after deducting of course the charge for the payment processing and the e-commerce side the same will be credited into their account so that part of uh, uh, that part of handling will again be done by clearing service so clearing service will again follow the same procedure which we were using for card transaction only this time uh, it will use the internet banking facility or the uh, or the clearing house facility so that is another complex topic to discuss but at high level you can understand that uh, initially when the money was deducted from the buyer's account it was parked into the account which was owned by acquiring bank of the seller or the merchant basically which in this case is amazon now when clearing happens the money will be deducted from the acquiring bank's account and it will be sent to each of the individual seller so that is where the payment clearing service will come into picture and it will be part of the payment gateway itself and if this transaction has failed the same logic will apply it will put the message in the failed queue and a retry will happen now again for the clearing service i i missed one box here which will be a, a transaction id will be generated for clearing so this transaction id will basically map all the transaction that happened for that seller on that particular day or whatever is the clearing time so for that particular clearing time so this is the overall picture of your payment processor and this will be integrated with the payment ingestion and overall it makes up the payment gateway so i hope the explanation was very clear if you have any doubt put it in the comment section and uh, if you have reached here do like the video do subscribe to the channel so thank you for watching this particular video see you in the next video take care bye